Tie Cats fans, welcome back to the uh, virtual draft room presented by Tie Cats Insurance, provided by my insurance broker. Uh, Tie Cats with another pick, defensive lineman Mason Bennett, adding to uh, Coulter Woods Mania as their uh, two first round picks to discuss that, among many other things, is our very good friend, the color analyst of the Tie Cats, former Tie Cat himself, Mike Morielli. Mike, how are you, buddy? I'm good, buddy. I'm good. How you doing, Louie? Doing well. It's great to see you. Uh, we were talking about this, uh, like the Titans really didn't have any very, you know, gaping holes that needed right. to be filled heading into the draft. So here you got a couple of depth moves. And when you are in a position like the Ticats are in, you can kind of take your time with guys like this if you have to. Well, the, the Cats have done such a tremendous job drafting over the years um, that they've stockpiled talent. And it, it's amazing, even when they lose, lose talent through, through free agency, they have a way to find it and create more depth. And, and as a matter of fact, create starting positions for some of these guys that we've seen with Sirocco and Reverberg, et cetera. So they pulled something kind of right out of their playbook again this year and go with Woods Maney and uh, makes sense. 6'5", 295, big kid. But you're right, there was no gaping hole. So now it's just about where do you create more depth? You can never have enough uh, good offensive linemen. I think the D-line was another position where, you know, you want to get some other capable backups behind. Um, you know, Ted Laurent with Connor McGough leaving, etc. So good, you know, I expect the receiver probably to pick, it, you know, shortly. But again, the Cats have done such a tremendous job over the last couple of years that these are these are luxury picks. And the fact they have two picks in the first round and they were in the Great Cup is, you know, <laughs> is crazy. But they're, they're making it happen and, and kudos to them. Uh, the thing about the, the CFL draft is, is everybody knows its importance uh, on the league when it comes to the ratio and things like that. Uh, the guys don't always become superstars, all stars, uh, but but you really can't understate just how important this day is for teams when it comes to building lineups across the board, offensively, defensively, special teams. Yeah, I think a lot of people see it just at the face value. They don't realize the importance of, of this draft. I mean, it's vitally important. Uh, free agency as well, but not so much as the draft specifically because it's the chance to have your kind of pick of the litter, so to speak, of the top players in Canada, in, in whether they play, you know, in NCAA or whether they play in in, the, in U Sports. So they make up 50% of the team. The team, in my opinion, with the best Canadians are the ones that go and, and go to great cups or win great cups. It just, you have to play that way because, you know, you don't want to have the drop off from the 10th player to the ninth player to the eighth and so on. You want to make sure you have the ability if you lose a guy that you replace with a quality Canadian. So that depth is incredibly important. The depth of Canadians, but also, uh, you know, the Tigers have done a really good job when it comes to versatility of players and finding players who can play different positions. And you know, we've talked about this real quick, or the, just kind of some of the lineup moves that the Ticats have made. You know, a guy like Patrick Levels may fly a little bit under the radar, but those guys, like Coach O always says, they create competition in camp and really bring out the best of each other. Yeah, and Coach O knows from kind of when we played together, when he played for Toronto, etc., is that you got to have good character guys. You got to have lots of them, and you have to have guys who can do more than one thing. You know, our, our 99 team was not the best man to man, let's say, across the board, but collectively we're great. And it's because we were pushed at all levels. We had guys that won compete and were an inch away from being starters themselves. So I think that's what the Cats have created but they've created under that family uh, mantra. And, and that's what makes things a little bit different is that those guys are willing to play roles. And it, sometimes that's hard for, for a guy that's been a star in, in college or what have you to, to assume a role, but that's what makes uh, good teams. And the Cats have done a great job just creating that culture with it. This Ticats group specifically has, you know, a, a handful of guys, maybe even a couple of handful of guys who have now lost three great cups and I don't bring that up you know lightly uh, obviously as, as fans we want them to win every time but when you have that burning sensation of, of losing a great cup and again well, I don't you know what burning that, sensation you that... you're having uh, Lewis but hey I know we're live I know we're live you can't just be throwing that out there what are you doing <laughs> uh, but when you talk about losing a great cup and, and turning it around the next year how do you use yeah. that as motivation I mean, we lived through it, or Coach Orlando lived through it in, in 98 when we lost last second field goal and we, we went to the Grey Cup the following year and beat them. And it started in training camp. So I think Coach O's going to, you know, 
bring up the fact right away that what happened last year in the Grey Cup is not the way they wanted to finish. And it starts here. And I don't think that that message will change uh, no matter what happens when football gets back to playing. I think that that feeling of losing a Grey Cup is something you almost remember longer than winning the Grey Cup because it's that, you know, thought that you could have, could have, would have, should have. So it's a new page, new team, but that's that's great motivation for these guys because it really shows them that you can reach the pinnacle, but it's nothing unless you take that final step. So they've done all the right things and I expect uh, this year to be no different. Mike, I appreciate catching up. I appreciate the unsolicited uh, medical <laughs> there as well. Uh, great to see your sense of humor is still intact. Uh, oh, you better believe it. You time. better believe it. Uh, we're gonna, we can catch you in just a few minutes on TS at 1150. Uh, thanks so much for doing this, buddy. Always great to see you. And we'll talk Likewise. soon. Awesome. There he is, Mike Morielli. Don't go anywhere. Simone Lawrence coming up. This is the Tiger Cats virtual draft party. Also coming up, don't go anywhere because there's going to be a spin to win contest live on Facebook. Autographed jersey up for grabs and memorabilia as we say goodbye to Mike Morielli. Don't go anywhere. Simone Lawrence is coming up and we will be joined by Coulter Woods Mania at some point coming up right here. The Tiger Cats virtual draft party continues on our Facebook page. It's presented by Tiger Cats Insurance, provided by my insurance broker.